This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. WordPress as an application platform, not a blogging platform. So can I get a show of hands just so I can understand the audience? Um, like if you're primarily a designer, maybe you raise your hand. Okay, if you program in JavaScript, raise your hand. All right, a bunch of JavaScript. If you program in PHP, raise your hand. All right, if you've ever written your own plugin, raise your hand. All right. Um, let's see, what else should I ask? Uh, does anybody consider themselves primarily a programmer, right? By trade or training? Okay, so a few of us. All right, great. Um, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, oh yeah, can I see this okay? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take uh, just a couple minutes and talk about School Twist. This is the application uh, and the, the service that I want to put on WordPress. I'm going to give you, kind of give you the background, your know, motivation, what's, kind of what's going on, give you a short demo, then talk about what it was like doing this in WordPress, why I did it in WordPress, and uh, what I'm hoping to see from WordPress in the future and, and whatnot. If you have any questions along the way, happy to entertain them along the way, especially if they're relevant to the slides, we'll also save some time for the end. So, um, you know, this is me. I have an IT background, uh, computer science. I do a lot of PHP programming. And uh, I also have a business background. Uh, my wife helps me with this, but School Choice is basically a, an indie developer software project and I'm working on rolling it into a proper company and we're rolling out our first product like as we speak. So this is kind of where we are in this process. So what are we building? So uh, is anybody here uh, know like um, deal with like PTAs or have kids that have gone to school, stuff like that? Yeah, okay, yeah, a couple. So uh, anybody ever go to school? Yeah, <laughs> all right. A few of you, all right, good, good. Oh, and that little girl in the back has gone to school. All right, great. Um, so here's what happens at, at, at schools. A lot of kids go to after-school programs and they take these extra classes. Um, uh, it could be a, a Lego class, it could be a yoga class, it could be a drumming class, a electrical engineering class, and this is after-school, and these are elementary school kids. So you have uh, PTOs organize these classes. Now you have other people that teach these classes, and they have challenges like finding schools, uh, developing new courses and whatnot. And then you have people that have developed courses, usually <laughs> the same people that teach them, but not always. And they, it stays hyper-local, and um, so it's a problem. So now what we're doing, what School Twist does, is we're creating a registration system to help these PTAs organize this. Right now, it is ridiculously labor-intensive to pull this stuff together, and I mean like crazy labor-intensive. So it's sort of a standard online thing to help them with that. But also for the people that make the courses, we're creating a marketplace so that if you're a school, instead of just saying, hey, we know somebody that knows French, maybe they could teach a French class, they could go online and say, you know what, there's this awesome electrical engineering class in Boston, maybe we should have it at our school. And say, hey, can anybody, here's this course, could somebody here teach it for us? And then there's this very cool aspect to this. Um, if you are a school where your parents, where the parents of the kids can't afford tuition, right now there isn't very much going on in the after school world. Not that there's nothing, but there's not a lot of great stuff. There's aftercare, so they're getting taken care of, but the great courses like electrical engineering and junior structural engineering, stuff like this, this happens at primarily the rich schools. So now, these schools could potentially say, hey, uh, we're poor school, for lack of a better term, and you know, we would like someone to come in and help. There are volunteers out there that would happily teach something. Now, in the past, you need to, there's all this matchmaking that needs to happen. It's very labor intensive, so it doesn't happen very often. But there's this marketplace. Those volunteers could be matched up with those schools. Course developers could say, well, I want to charge the rich school a licensing fee, but hey, it's an underprivileged school. Yeah, you can have a free shirt, why not? So there's actually this great, awesome potential to really make a big impact, both at, you know, say, inner city schools where there's not that tuition, 
or perhaps the rural schools where there isn't the density enough, enough density to have these classes. This is something we're super excited about. And um, so uh, the product we have literally as we speak is just the registration side. And this is like kind of the short video I put together to kind of set, set the tone. Bear with me for a second. You're a busy mom, or maybe you're a busy dad. Life is busy, but good. Today, little Maddie has after school French club, trivia. Little Gavin has after school electrical engineering class. Shocking. Hey, these classes are awesome, but where do they come from? The after school ferry? No, volunteers. Your parents volunteered, and now you volunteer. You're busy, but competent, and you love your kids. How hard can it be? Well, not exactly hard but very time consuming. Didn't you say something about being busy? You find classes, you find teachers, you send out flyers, parents send in checks through kid mail. What mail? How much money just went into that backpack? Now you match payments to the registration forms. How many emails go back and forth? 10 emails, 20 emails, 100 emails, 200 emails, checks. Forms, flyers, emails, oh, sanity slipping away. Does this method work? Yes, but only because heroic volunteers like yourself make it work. But why is it so much work? Seriously, we live with drones, talking watches, robots on Mars. We live in the future, but after school stuff feels like 1970. Is there a better way? Of course there is. Use School Twist. Offer a unified course catalog online. Accept credit cards. Use a system explicitly designed to efficiently run after school classes. Save endless hours. You are too smart to do it the old way. School Twist. Real world after school class management and registration software from the future. Yes, I made that myself. <laughs> How do you make that? Uh, there is a site called Powtoons, and it's a subscription-based. Uh, for a few hundred bucks, you kind of can make a bunch, or you can do a one-off. So, anyway, so how did I get involved in this? So uh, before I did this software, I used to run, um, and I still do actually, uh, a company called Assembly. I started back in Washington D.C. to teach after-school STEM classes. <laughs> And for my son and rising daughter, I wanted some robotics classes. And I didn't see anything I liked, so I started this program. And we do junior structural engineering, a lot of getting kids to think like engineers using Legos. We have uh, a totally awesome double E class. So we actually teach electrical engineering to first graders, and uh, we have an advanced version for third graders. You know, advanced, right? Um, and uh, we have a wooden new wooden contraption class and a couple other small ones that fit in the cracks. So we really know this after school space. Registration is live now, then uh, the content's coming later. So uh, let me give you a quick quick demo just to show what, what we have here. So this is uh, for a school over in Brookline that I'm working with. And yeah, you can see that, okay. So, um, um, just for so just for completeness, if if you are doing like real uh, application, if you're like me, you're going to need like a totally different site for the sales. So this is our sales site, and we use WP Engine for our hosting, uh, and we is kind of royal we, but. It's probably not realistic to have it your sales side be the same as your application side, and so on their sales, they they go here and they um, they can sign up from here. This is a multi press site in the background, so when they sign up, we do a, a new install of, of a WordPress uh, multi site for them, and it creates something like this. So you have a nice little home page here, and if you recognize this, this is a generic Genesis theme in the back. And we give them a course catalog. So 
you know, it's not necessarily a lot to look at, but you can make this as fancy as you want. These are custom post types, and and then we go and we have some custom tables that keep track of the days of the week and stuff like that and, and what's available. So then if you decide on something that you like, you go over to the registration form. And the registration form, again, this is outside of WordPress, so to speak. I mean, the code is there, but we're not using any of the WordPress utilities to get to uh, on, at this point. And so you could say, hey, what are you going to sign up for? And I'll just do this test class. And you'll have to have patience with me. It might break here, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and then we'll go, yeah. So, um, okay, so, matter of time, I'm gonna do this kind of quickly. So, we'll, you know, we'll put uh, some, some test data in here. In my experience, so, you know, I'm kind of a PHP programmer and a uh, 3D graphics guy way back. Uh, I found when it came time to actually making this form that w WordPress was not super helpful. Not, not that it, I, I'm, I'm sure if I knew better, I could totally make this work, but, but I didn't know better. And, Into a bunch. I'll, I'll cover them in, in a second. So one of the uh, bigger challenges is each school has like their own requirements. And when I started this, uh, I was there are a couple sites out there that that say they do that after school registration or event registration, but it's kind of one of these things like you have to do it our way or you're out of luck. And in my experience, that's completely unrealistic. So I use uh, Gravity Forms to add on so people, so the users can make their own gravity forms, tack them on to the base registration. Uh, and that seems to work out pretty well. I use, um, um, uh, Stripe for credit card processing. Uh, since I was doing multi-site, Stripe and multi-site, don't necessarily play well together because Stripe demands that you go back to a single URL and you can't give it a dynamic URL. Last I, I looked, at least I couldn't figure out how to do it. And so that was a, a, a trick. So I, you have to do some things like, you know, if your single site's no problem, but if your multi site, you need to set up like a helper site to redirect it. And it's not as elegant as you would like, but you know, oh well. So, so anyway. Uh, you go through the process and pay with the credit card and, you know, great, right? So that works. And what do you use for paying with the credit card? What I use, it's, it's uh, Stripe is the credit card processing service. So if, like, we do this, it pops up and you get your credit card stuff. Did you just, did it, I'm sorry, did yeah. you I just, I, right now I'm pretending to be a parent and I just registered for an after school class. So let me show you the other, the, the flip side of this. So, um, give me a second to pull up the one I'm looking for. I'm just going to get in as, as the right user. Um, so, <coughs> Sorry, give me a second.
All right. So now, if you're a, if you're the organizer of the site, then you can see this is this is you know it's recognizable as WordPress, but not super recognizable. So the dashboard, I have stuff related to my classes. When I go to settings, then I fill in a bunch of stuff related to um, you know how am I going to how, how we're going to do stuff with the default tuition, um, date and time, or the default dates and times, uh, stuff like that. There's finance settings. Uh, we track our locations and the, and the number of uh, different people teaching. And then we do a thing with the courses. So we Does have a... Do you like to add yep. a location or add a... within that UI? Uh, yes. So if we go to locations now, uh, this one, there's just one location. It's the school. But we can do as many locations as, as you want to. So this is you know the one location, and we just have you know one co coach. But then on the back end we have a bunch of courses. So you can see now, and we have courses set up as a custom post type for a course. Um, you, you edit it, you offer it from here, and so on. And then we have a kind of a complicated class management thing. So. In reality, it gets a little complicated, so that you have a new class and you have to be tracking who's going to teach it, where it's going to be taught, when does it start, when does it end, are there special forms associated with it? Like some classes have allergens and stuff like that. All right, so here's a you know this is a bunch of stuff about you know about the site. Um, what else? What what's, what would be what would be relevant here? Yeah. Okay, so, so that's that's good for now. Um, bring me back my slides. Okay, so that's the site, um, and I can show you more if we need to. So, building on WordPress, and um, you know, should you should you do a, a real app on WordPress? You know. The short answer is no way. It's crazy. Don't do it. WordPress is built for blogging, you know, from the ground up. And I know some other sites do some non-blog type things out there, but it's blogging at its heart. Whenever, for me, I'm creating new communities. Whenever I do a new community, I add about 10 tables to the database. And I know if I scale too much, that is a, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a hosting expense and uh, network operations expense I'm gonna have to deal with. If I'm popular, that's thousands of tables. Now MySQL could handle thousands of tables, but that's still an issue. And you know, it's kind of older technology. This isn't using the cool stuff. However, uh, it is scalable. And there are some other things that are scalable out there also. S Symphony, um, you know, so other stuff. So it's not that other things aren't scalable. But we know deep down the scalability issue is, is solvable with WordPress. Sometimes there's other things, man, you get fancy technology and it should be scalable, but it gets expensive to solve. I have a network operations background. I dealt with, with, with scalability issues. I know as a, as a semi-independent person, uh, you know, I'm, I want to add people to my company, but right now it's, more, it's mainly me. You know, I know that with money I could pay uh, WP Engine or or, uh, or A2 to solve the scaling pro problem for me. I don't need to hire great, amazing people out of Silicon Valley. This is kind of an old problem. We know security, although there's always issues, they're pretty on top of security. And you can do multiple communities. There's some other platforms out there that I really love, but they it's, it's, it's like one community. You can't do you can't do your segregated stuff without putting a lot of extra developer energy into it. So like Zillow, uh, for their realtors, they use, multi last I checked, they use uh, WordPress multi-sites, so that's kind of a big deal. Obviously, WordPress.com and uh, EduBlogs. And there's lots of, I mean, you guys know this, but there's lots of, lots of plugins, there's lots of developers. So um, for me, I, you know, I, I love that I could go out and reasonably guess that there's a plugin to solve the problem I'm doing. If it doesn't solve my problem, I can look at it figure out what's going on and maybe programming it up. And I could reasonably hire a freelancer and say, hey, do this small chunk. It needs to kind of look like this. Here's some code to get you started. And they can do something different. 
the biggest challenge there with existing plugins is the vast majority of them only work for single site. They don't work for multi-site. Um, and obviously there, there are uh, license issues uh, with that, but uh, from a business perspective, you know, I'm fine paying people for that. Uh, and it's commercial friendly. I happen to like Drupal and I visited it a while ago and uh, I got this fairly heated discussion online about if I make a plug-in, can I, can I charge for it or can I own it? And you know, everything in open source, this is this dodgy issue, but they were like vehemently like, no, like, no, you can't. And you know, but in WordPress, there's a lot of businesses around WordPress. And you know, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, I'm quite happy to give back to the community, but this isn't a volunteer uh, operation for me. And then there's rapid development. So I use advanced custom fields and admin columns and gravity forms. As an independent person, this is kind of a big deal for me. I want to, uh, do, I, I don't want to do everything hard coded if I can avoid it. Um, so how did, um, how did I get here? Uh, you know, basically I don't want to blog. I had to turn off tons of blog specific stuff. This is this big bummer with WordPress. Like, even the basis install, it's it's a blog, and so uh, I'm I'm moving a bunch of stuff. Um, I have a slide here. I'll show you in a second. Maybe not. Let me. Uh, so this is kind of cool. So this is uh, this is what my user sees and this this my user who owns it yeah, I call him a webmaster or her webmaster but now that's different from the admin so on the same site if I go up to the dashboard oh crummy excuse me Sorry, we'll, we'll be back in just a second. Okay, so now as, as a super admin, so this is all of the WordPress that's here that I have to turn off. So I have extra, extra widgets to turn off, notices to turn off, stuff, you know, hosting messages, things with forms. This is kind of my site. The order of this stuff is all messed up from a user perspective. That it doesn't make sense. I don't want them seeing themes. I, I mean, these are people that have to have a lot of authority. So, in but I still need to turn it off. Um, all these settings don't make sense for them. So this is what needs to get turned off, and that's the that's the, the downside. The other thing that is kind of this this funny quirk: if you go to WordPress.com and you're a webmaster there. And you want some other people to come in and help you. They have this nice little, yeah, invite this other user and you give them this role of author or whatever. But you can't do that on WordPress.org. And there's no plugins to do that. It's just really glaring gap. Uh, I ended up making or hiring actually and, and then modifying a plugin to do that. So I do, uh, I send out an invite to a person to give them a role. And then I have a management screen of here's who you've sent it out to, down here is who's recently accepted, and then you can, and re, and then you can revoke them. And to be honest, I, I can't imagine running anything without this type of facility. So, by the way, I have that, and that's proprietary, but if anyone is interested in helping me turn that into open source, I'll be happy to work with you. Um, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, this might be a little bit off topic, but um, okay. if, um, what is more easy out of the Um, 
Well, you know, I, I'm not up on all of those. I, I can say I used to work with Joomla, um, and it was, it was, I, I thought it was incredibly painful. Um, Drupal, I hear wonderful things about, but for me, the license was incompatible with what I was doing, and the community was incompatible with it. So I, I'm not sure. My my impression is that they're all pretty bad, and but WordPress is the best. But we're kind of in. So and, and I say that not not to be facetious, but like I've been in computer science and, and business uh, for a long time uh, since you know since I was you know this high, and some of the challenges we have in computer science are the same. You know, some things get better, but still deep core things, you know, drag on for like 20 years. And so when I, like WordPress is awesome, but I'm frustrated that things aren't better because, you know, from a technical perspective, you know, this is, it could be. So, sorry, I don't have a better answer for you than that. But afterwards, that's a great question for the group. Uh, what well, it's functionally it's not different, but um, it goes out by email, so they don't have to be a user. Uh, they they don't have to accept the invitation. You, you can keep track of outstanding invitations or not. So you, you kind of think of the workflow. You get a bunch of you get you know three volunteers at a school, and their uh, their CFO needs to come on board. So you know they send an email to the CFO, tell them what they need to do. You need to log them in. You need to see. You know who's out there, and, and, and uh, you know who's accepted, and who hasn't. So it's it's just it's just a more a much more user friendly way of tr keeping track of who's coming in, what their roles are, and, and what you know. Um, yeah. So um, just on a very practical sign, if you're doing a real site, you need to sell. Yeah. So I do that on a different site. You need to onboard people. This sounds silly, but this is this huge deal from a business perspective. So how do you onboard this new individual user? I'm also interested in onboarding like a new school. So how do you track that? The reality is right now, like my stuff, it works. I've used this at about 50 schools, like, but this is the first screen that they see after they sign up and it's intimidating. So this whole, and there's companies that do this and I know there's plugins that help with this, but this is like this huge deal. How do you, how do you onboard them? Then you have a bunch of schools or multi-sites. How do you track what's what? So I have um, some some custom fields. I say tables, custom fields on keeping track of the different sites, and I show the site number, the domain that it is, and how to get to it. Because if you don't if you don't track that stuff, like you don't know. I don't know how other people keep track of their different communities. Um, I do a little bit of support. I use a third-party thing called Freshdesk. It's fine. And uh, creates tickets and creates a knowledge base. So, uh, so the next part is creating a clean slate. So that was kind of like big picture WordPress. But more practically speaking, so what do I do? I, um, I have a custom build system. It's PHP. And if any of you have set up a WordPress site, you know, it's, it's, it's exhilarating. You, you download it, you download some plugins, you, you edit it a little bit, and you're like, oh my god, this is awesome. And then you try to get it on to your hosting provider, and, and you're like, oh, well, okay, now, now what did I do again? All right, so uh, I was this plugin, this plugin, these 10 settings, and it's like a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah, it's more than a bit of a challenge. And if you have a serious app, you need to be able to, I would argue, you need to be able to do updates a lot. And you need to be able to switch computers. Actually, my desktop had a catastrophic disk failure the other day, and I'm all backed up. And happily, I had the build system so I could get up and going on my laptop relatively easy. But uh, if I didn't have a build system, it would be inconceivable to recreate <coughs> a sophisticated app in WordPress. There's, um, you know, before I had a build system, of course, I'm documenting it, you work on this, and it, there's just too many steps to get right. Uh, if you haven't experienced WP, CLI, CLI, command line interface, it's amazing. So I find that really critical. With one line, you can say download WordPress. You could tell it to get certain um, plugins if it's on WordPress.org. You could copy over zipped up plugins and whatnot. 
I have a sales site. I do a few different um, uh, plugins. I have an app-based plugin for me that is safety and security. For me, my biggest fear in my experience is a plugin failing because in WordPress, some, sometimes plugins fail silently and they just turn off. They just like turn off and if you're there on the screen, I'll give you this nice little message, this was turned off. But if you didn't see that, man, you're out of luck. And if one of those plugins is a security plugin, then suddenly that's the real problem. And for me, I can't have these extra things up there. Um, so one of the things I do is I have a, a plugin wrangler and it says, here's, so at the app base, it says, here are the three plugins I absolutely require before I'll run. And up at my make it all clean, clean and provide some base services, it says, here are these six more plugins that I absolutely require to run. And at this very base level, if those plugins aren't there, the whole site shuts down and goes into maintenance mode. And so is that cool? You know, is that cool for the user? Terrible for the user. But for me, I know things stay pretty tight. I had to do a site factory. So when uh, people sign up for a new site, you need something special there to kind of handle this process. School Twist is my real site. And then this is this helper site because some things demand a single instance, such as uh, Stripe, for example, mainly just Stripe. And since um, uh, each of these circles represents a different Git repository, and I'm really bummed that I have so many, and that's a problem, but oh well. <laughs> so uh, on the security side, um, I am a big fan of using high-end hosts. I use WP Engine. Are they the best? I'm not sure. Uh, they, they seem really good. And I add a lot of my own security, but I think they have a lot of other stuff in the back end. I hear A2 is very good. Um, I also use a security audit plugin and, and, and brute force and a couple other things. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, I mentioned that that ranger. Okay, so you know this is the cleaning before, and then we pare it down to that. So this other thing is the rapid development framework. So one of my favorite things by WordPress and. And personally, I think this is kind of the future of good software development uh, for the non-VC backed companies. Is be able to do like a GUI based development, but it has to be code compatible. So if you're doing something serious, you need to be able to put it in version control. You need to be able to put it through a deployment process. And a GUI stuff where your code is in the database, that's not deployment compatible. But some of these things have some kind of code mildly friendly things. So like I use advanced custom fields quite a bit and they will persist their settings to JSON. <coughs> so like when I'm doing my settings for the enrichment program, you know, I say here's here's the label, it's a text field, and, and then it shows up in the app like this. You know, that works out pretty well. That is like way better than doing it manually. You can do some some um, stuff. But to make that happen and make that version control compatible, that's a custom plugin. So here are the big pain points so far. WordPress starts off as a blog. The theme and plugins are strongly decoupled. So you saw I have a location custom post type, but to make uh, that page that shows all the locations or the course custom post type show the, the course catalog that shows all the courses, that that course catalog in WordPress is archive, and you put in your theme, you say archive, the name of your custom post type, and it throws it up there. You can't put that, you just you just can't put that into your plugin. This is this huge deal. There might be workarounds to this. I haven't been able to find them. If you know them, please tell me. But that forces me to have two different version control systems, one for the theme and one for all the, the business logic, and that just bites. Multi-site is awesome, but it's still a second-class citizen to the WordPress community. I hope that changes. And the rapid uh, plugins like Advanced Custom Fields, they're, they're not exactly version control friendly. Uh, Advanced Custom Fields has JSON, which I can work with. I use this other one, uh, Advanced Menu Editor, um, incompatible with it. I had to abandon it. Um, so, and Git, um, I think, sucks but it sucks less than uh, SVN, so psh, whatever. And wordpress.sacrogenic.com, uh, potentially awesome, 
but they, as a community, it is uh, very tightly focused on almost, not quite core WordPress development, but they're not super inviting. Uh, it's very frustrating uh, for me. About half the posts I really like there get voted as off topic, so whatever. Um, Advanced Custom Fields and a custom plugin works out pretty well. Admin Columns Pro works out well. I recommend it uh, with some uh, you know custom plugins. Uh, I have a Ajax and jQuery framework to communicate from the back end and the front end to change stuff or you know do some of the back end it changes the front end. I use Codeception for acceptance testing that works out pretty well. PHP Storm for development. Bitbucket is free and it's private Git so that's good. Uh, WP Cli and a custom build script works out well. In WP ME Dev, um, uh, WordPress like multi-user dev. Yeah. What is uh, Codeception? Codeception is um, if you haven't looked at it, highly uh, recommend it. So you make new code, you have to do unit testing, right? Codeception is a unit testing framework. Um, uh, and way in the back end, I think it's PHP unit behind it. It is uh, you can do things like say start up Selenium, open it up, and look for this on the screen. Uh, if you don't care about JavaScript, you can say start a PHP browser and look for this on the screen. And you can say log in as a user doing this. Like I, it's very statement oriented. It works out well, and you can do unit tests and uh, with a functional tests and acceptance tests. So um, I recommend it. It's it's good. Skip right past PHP unit. Those other ones go straight to Codeception. And WMU Dev uh, for me, it's expensive. It's like hundred bucks a month or some crazy thing. But once in a blue moon, I have a question and I'm just flummoxed and I could go on there and someone will um, answer my question. They have like a support staff. I don't know how it works. It's like semi-volunteer based, but questions get answered like real people try to <coughs> And as a small person, a uh, small company, that's kind of critical for me. I wish uh, that rapid development was baked in and it was more continuous deployment aware, you know, it's kind of SVN aware, and the plugins are, there. there's kind of an impedance mismatch between the plugin system and a, deploy, and a continuous deployment system, and the plugin theme strategy uh, that would meld nicely instead of being decoupled. So um, then, if you guys haven't heard, there's this cool WordPress.com uh, new open source thing, and it's a, it's a nice, uh, they've open sourced, their admin interface is a nice new way to interact with WordPress. It looks really cool, um, and I love it. It is uh, it itself is uh, one of the cool things about it is you can distribute an application, but it's GPL version two, so that's that's uh, that distributable part doesn't work for companies. So let's see, and as a company, we're just trying to grow. Let's see. Yeah, so so that's it. If anybody's interested, uh, we're in the middle of uh, raising some money. If anybody's interested in, especially if they care about this mission aspect, like uh, helping the schools in need, come talk to me. And that's School Twist. Any, uh, thank you, and are there any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Please. Yeah. Um, what you have to do is you have to go into the CSS, find that out through the theme, or build a child theme, um, and use the child theme um, on your site. Then go in there, find the CSS, <coughs> and then go and apply those styles to the plugins. And you can go into the plugins if you, you know go go through the back end, go go to the CSS on the plugins. Because I did this with a WordPress plugin on a Joomla site, and you can make them all look the same. Hmm. Maybe maybe I could ask you about it. Uh, afterwards, because I have some questions about about the code logic that shows up in that child thing. But yeah, thanks. Let's, let's please let's talk. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, or comments? What went into the decision? Like I think using WordPress over Drupal. Yeah. Well, um, what went into the decision of using WordPress instead of like a, a language framework? Yeah. Um, you know. As somebody that was starting off by himself, one of my biggest, um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, my, 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 my two big points, like more than anything else, is the security around WordPress. 
So I know that I could get some really hardcore secure plugins to do like um, uh, when when Russia is just trying to, to break in. There's there's stuff and databases and services there to help me. But if I use like Symphony, that's not there. It, not that it couldn't be there. Like all that stuff's great, but I know I could go out and, and get that solved right now. Uh, I could bootstrap. I mean, I could do that by doing that plugin today, and with a little bit extra money, I could pay people to do that. And it's not like pay people to solve a new security issue, like hire, you know, a 200K a year guy to solve it. It's like, you know, for a few thousand dollars, I could really get a lot of security help. So that's, that's one. And the other one, I guess the other two are, I know it can scale. A lot of other stuff can scale to a degree. Can it scale to WordPress degree? Not necessarily. Um, and they have multiple communities so all my sites have to be their own community for various reasons and most of those frameworks are kind of single community frameworks i don't know of any that are multi-community frameworks there, there might be so that combination of stuff it makes it a good good fit for me knowing like hey there's there's problems with it but in my experience every framework you, you pick no matter how awesome it is cool it is there's going to be problems with it it's just like which problems do you want to tackle as an independent guy, I don't want to tackle security or scalability. How do you uh, monitor application performance? Um, good question. Right now, it's not really an issue. So going with someone like uh, WP Engine, I know some other hosters will do this too. I know for the right price, they'll uh, scale. They'll scale out your database. Uh, I forget. I don't know whatever whatever the right term for that is nowadays, but they'll they'll do that. Um, right now, it's, it's kind of a non-issue. I'm looking really closely at a few different systems to monitor that. Uh, I know the importance of stress testing a site. I'm just that's kind of the least of my concerns at the moment. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned onboarding earlier. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, not out of the box with, with WordPress, uh, but yeah, it could be done. And that's what, for me, that's kind of what has to be done. If, if you're having an app and, you know, it's really easy as a developer to go, oh my gosh, you know, it's going to be the, the most awesome thing. But, you know, it's so heartbreaking when you see somebody sign up. And then you see they never do that first data entry. And it's like, oh my gosh, what, what happened? You're like calling them. It's like, can I help you? And it's like, no, you know, you can't call everybody. It needs to be really self-evident of what needs to happen next. Like I said, there's some companies that help with that. But, um, you know, no, nah, you just need to throw some work at it. And a couple over here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't remember off, off the top of my head. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Well, one out there is Brute Force Protect, uh, which which I, I think is good, but I'm not a security expert, so I'm not sure. I know Jetpack has some good stuff also. Yes, sir? Uh, yeah, no, no, it's, it's been pretty good. Uh, although I, so, you know, the, the first school, so I've been using this for my old company, uh, for a long time and I've just recently kind of productized the software. So the first school that was on this productized version was my daughter's school and we're going live the next day and it's like, yeah, I've been testing it, doing all the, you know, all my latest stuff and put it on production and, and actually do this dry run. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, what, what's happening? I, I, I can't, I can't, the credit card won't process, you know, what is going on? Freaking out, you know, I've got 200 people gonna sign up the next morning, a lot of money going through the system, so on a typical school, you know, that credit card, they'll process like maybe $20,000 of credit card stuff, right? And nothing's going through. It's like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm trying to figure out, it's like, what I do, what I do, what I do. And I realized what about how it was about 12:30 in the morning. I realized sessions aren't working. 
it's like such and such just dead. It's like what what the heck? And and I'm I'm going. It's like and I search. And it's like this sessions don't work on the stuff. It's all cash. So I call them up. It's like hey, is there anything you can do? It's like oh yeah, what, what's the URL that you need session debt on? And ten minutes later, those sessions were back on for my sub site where the cart was. So WP Engine, my experience so far has been great. Um, you know, the answer is sometimes no on what they can do or can't do, but it's been good. It's always easy to get a certificate, a SSL certificate, stuff like that. And one of the things that they do is they do snapshots of your stuff. And so whenever you do anything scary, you can take a snapshot of it. And there's a staging platform. So you can take your live site and say, copy this to staging. And then you test your plugins on that, do it. Then you could copy it, you could either discard it or copy, or copy it to live. And you could either choose to copy the code or the code in the database. Uh, I think that's critical. If, if, you, if you can't do that staging in a, real, in a reliable manner, then that is a showstopper. If you're, if you're going to be making a lot of changes with a lot of data, that's important. So, all right. All right. Uh, I will be around. Thank you so much for listening.